Hello everyone and welcome to the latest video in Pat Problems with Helena and Kat. My name is Kat, I'm the Physics Access Officer at Oxford University and today I'm going to be talking you through the problem on screen which is question 8 from the 2015 Pat paper. Now before we start, the year I'm filming this, 2024, the Pat is going to be an on-screen multiple choice paper. And that means that we're not going to see your working and that putting in your answers is going to be a bit different to what I'm showing you today. But don't worry, I'm going to talk you through that as we go. And if you're interested in finding more, you can join our preparing for the PAT course. The syllabus for the PAT is completely unchanged. So questions like this are just as relevant as they would be for any other year's PAT. So without further ado, let's have a look at question eight. Question eight asks us to find the slopes and y-intercepts of the straight lines that are tangent and normal to the circle, and I've got an equation here, x plus 3l squared plus y minus 3l squared equals 17 at the point 1, 2. So reading this question a bit more closely tells me there are actually four things that I'm looking for here. I've got two lines, the tangent to the circle and the normal to the circle at the point 1, 2. And I've got to find their intercept and slope of both of them. So almost finding their full equation. The equation as I'm given it is nice and straightforward, so I'm going to start by drawing a diagram. Now, as I said, we are not going to get you working this year. You're just going to select an answer on screen. But that doesn't mean that skills like this, drawing your diagram to help you, aren't important. And that is because they help you. So your diagrams are just as important in helping you keep track of your working through the path, regardless of how you select your answer at the end. Having a look at my equation then, I can see that the centre of my circle is going to be at minus 3, 3, minus 3, 3. And I'll jot that down just so that I don't forget it. I can also see that the radius of my circle is root 17. I'm not too fussed about the exact size of root 17. I just need to know that it's 4 and a bit because that is going to help me know that my circle extends beyond this axis and beyond this axis. And that level of accuracy, while it's not too important, let's get this circle drawn, does help me picture the scenario that I'm working on. So it helps me imagine where my point one, two is on this circle. And it helps me see that there is going to be a tangent and there is going to be a normal and that those are going to have real intercepts. So it's a really useful exercise just to help us almost as a sense check. I'm going to use two different colours. I'm going to draw in my tangent to my circle in green. And I think I'll label that as line one. And I'm going to sketch in my normal to my circle. So the line from the centre of the circle out to that point in pink and call it line two. And from there on in, it's really straightforward. So let's start with this line one. I've got a point on the line and I know that it's related to this one. Even though I've labeled it line one, it's actually easier to find the gradient of line two first. So I labeled them in the order that I drew them. I'm gonna calculate them in the order that makes more sense to me. And that's because calculating the gradient of this line is dead easy. I've got two points on it straight away. So I can just do the difference between my y coordinates over the distant difference between my x coordinates, giving me the fact that the gradient of line two is negative one over four. I know that m1, m2 equals negative one for perpendicular lines. And so I can also quickly get the gradient of line one which is four. So I've now got a gradient of negative one over four and a gradient of four. And because I was quite careful with my diagram, I've got a bit of a sense check there. This one is indeed positive and pretty steep. This one is negative and pretty shallow. So, so far it's looking good. All I need to find the equation of my lines are a gradient and a point on them. So I'm gonna do that for both of my lines, just using the straight line formula, y minus b is equal to m, open brackets, x minus a. Let's do that for line two first, because I find its gradient first. It makes more sense that way. 
and I'm going to use the point 1, 2. So I'm going to use y minus 2 is negative 1 over 4, open brackets, x minus 1. A bit of quick simplifying, that's going to come out to negative quarter x plus 9 over 4. It means that the intercept when x is equal to 0 is going to occur at x equals 0, y is equal to 9 over 4. And a little bit of sense checking, that's positive, just a bit over 2. Perfect. So I've got the intercept and the gradient of that first line sorted out. Let's come back to my second line, let's use the same point, but this time it'll be y minus 2 is equal to 4, open brackets, x minus 1. Quick bit of multiplying through gives me y equals 4x minus 2, when x equals 0, in this case y is going to equal negative 2, which is down here. And there we have it, I've got one gradient and one intercept, a second gradient and a second intercept. That is the full four pieces of information that you need. In the 2024 paper, you will now be having a look on screen and selecting the correct answer. But that is the end of this week's video. We will see you next week when Helena will be presenting her last solution of the 2024 series. Thank you very much, everyone. Goodbye for now.